and make the uh, drawing for the 7-2 drill block and we're going to uh, start by creating a standard.idw file. This uh, also assumes of course that you've already made the drill block. If you have not yet made the drill block go ahead and do that first. Um, but if you've made it already you're, uh, you're good to go for, for, this, for this part. So uh, the first thing I want you to do is I want you to change the sheet size because the default sheet size is too large for, uh, for our part. So remember the way we do that is we just right click the sheet name and the model is the quickest way to do it and you just select edit sheet and when you select edit sheet you're going to switch it to sheet size B normally we do sheet size A but for this part because it's a slightly bigger than what we've done before and also because we want to include a uh, alternate view in here we want to uh, switch it to sheet size B which is an 11 by 17 sheet okay um, something that if we really needed to print we do have 11 by 17 paper if we really needed to print it and so we can do so all right so we switch the sheet size <clears throat> and then we're gonna go ahead and place a base view just like normal right so when we select the base view it's gonna be for the drill block now this assumes you have the drill block open already if you have not opened the drill block yet so you could select it using the file search window here right but then the view you want is going to be the one where you can see the holes from the top. If you don't have that, you can click through your views until you see that particular face. But if created uh, as we did in class, the front view should have the hole centers for you. Okay, so you just get that right and you click on the screen to place it. We have to save that, sorry, hold on. Uh, do that. Right? and then I can place that. Now I'm just gonna place the front view for now so I can right click and select OK. So the front view is placed. Front view. So I'm gonna kinda of place it in the kind of the top left corner. Right? And so that, that front view is in that front view is in place. Now there is an alternate view we have to place, but I also want to show you uh, how you can create a section view to show the interior of a part. Okay? The section view is going to come into play for your when you start your next project, uh, specifically when you do drawings for that. So uh, this is a good part to show you how to do that section view. So once you've placed your front view, instead of placing a right view or a bottom view or a top view or something like to show the depth of this, we're going to show the depth and interior details using a section view. So the way we do that is we click on the create ribbon here under place views. We're going to click section. So we click section and then it's going to switch our cursor to a view selector so since we only have one view to select we're just going to click that view and once I click the view my cursor then changes to a crosshair this crosshair is where I'm going to throw in what's called a cutting plane line this cutting plane line is going to indicate where along the depth am I going to sort of slice the part away so I can reveal what's inside Section view is very useful for showing internal features, things that are inside of a part. So this cutting plane line, we're going to place it along the midline horizontally across the part. What I like to do though is I kind of like to just start the cutting plane line outside of the midpoint. So what I usually do is I put my mouse over the side, the le uh, left side in this case, where I get a green dot. And then I just move my mouse to the left a little bit just to make sure that and it's a long line, so the midline, that's good. And then I click. Once I click, it turns into a line, right? So this line would be my cutting plane right now. But of course, I'm just gonna stretch it horizontally across so that's parallel to the side, and then just click outside of that line. And see how that line goes all the way through there? And then I click, and if, if I wanna do additional section, you know, if I wanted to do it like differently for some other reason, I could click further. But this time here, I'm just doing a regular horizontal line. So once I click, I'm gonna right click, and select continue. When I do that, it then allows me to place the section view. So notice that the section view is showing you from the side part of the hole. So you would be, it's kind of like, look, if you cut through exactly in the middle, what would you see? Right? That's what this cutting plane line is referring to. So because I did sheet size B, I don't have to play with the scale, but if I had to, I can make it a smaller scale. If I, for example, did one to two, right? That would be make it half the size but we didn't do that but if I do one to one that would be a full size 
right? So I want to, I, since I made the sheet size big enough, I can do it as a full size view, okay? So I'm going to click, and then that section view is in place, okay? I just kind of click below that to show, and I want the I want the view to be below so that way the holes appear upright. So see how I'm looking through, and I can see the interior. Remember these <coughs> these slanted lines here indicate that the material is inside, and then this is the sort of the side view of the holes. Now this is different than if we had placed a bottom view because if we placed a bottom view, these would all show up as hidden lines. But because I'm picturing myself having cut part of it away, that's why you see these as solid lines or object lines. Whereas you see these as the uh, being the interior part. Okay, so now that the section view is in place, we're going to go ahead and we're going to do some dimensions. All right, so here's the front view's dimensions, right? The linear dimensions. These parts are just right off of the part, either from the seven two activity or from the tolerance uh, handout. The very last page, number ten, has this drill block as well with these exact dimensions typed in this exact format, right? The only thing I haven't done yet, and I wanted to obviously do for the video, is the whole notes. So now, to do a whole note, it's easier than you think. All you got to do is, on the annotate ribbon, select hole and thread. When you select hole and thread, it turns into a dimension tool. And all you got to do is point to the outside circle or outside feature of a hole, right? And then you just click, and it puts all the information in for you. It puts all the depth, all of the, sorry, the depths the type of hole and the diameters puts that all in for you. So when I do this, these four holes, I can get basically all this information. When you do a hole though, you kind of want the hole to not have a, you don't want it to be a vertical line leader line. You want to always have it on an angle. Kind of like what's in the drawing. Okay. Now notice that, uh, and we'll fix this in a little bit, notice that this diameter is not showing up correctly based on what we had put in. We had put in a 0.375. It's showing as 0.38, so we're going to fix that in just a second. Okay. The only other thing you have to put in here as well, as far as dimensions are concerned, is the only dimension you can't tell right now is the depth of the block, how deep it goes. So what you have to do is add one dimension to your section view, and you just have to add, click on a vertical edge and click and get the overall depth placed. Okay, so that was the only other dimension you'd have to add to the section view. Section view you can leave by itself the rest of the way. You don't have to play with anything else about the section view except for the dimensions uh, on there, or dimension I should say. Okay, <clears throat> now, um, this video is not going to show you how to do every facet of the tolerance portion, but just so you know, this drawing that is right now is sufficient for 7.2, okay? So at the very least, turning in this drawing would give you would give you uh, credit for 7.2. But then we're going to then add more features to the tolerances for these dimensions, and I'd like to show you how to do that at this point. Okay, so what we'll do first, I want to show you how you can add in specific tolerances. So I'll, I'll show an example with a linear dimension and an example with a with a uh, uh, whole note. So what you do is. Outside of a dimension tool, you hit escape in case you are in, you just right click the dimension that you would like to add a specific tolerance to. And you're going to go to edit. When you go to edit, there's a couple of tabs. This might be the tab that you will initially see. But the tab that you want is called precision and tolerance. Now, precision and tolerance allows us to add in specific tolerances to a dimension. It also allows us to change the precision. It also will add, allow us to override the, the value that's displayed if we ever want to do that, which means that you would just do something in place of something that actually would be the, uh, the model's dimension. So with the, the, the dimension that I clicked, there is a specific dimension they want you to add, or specific tolerance, I should say, they want you to add in. This is just for the directions for number 10, okay? They want you to add in a bilateral tolerance to the overall length, width, and depth. So I'm going to show you how to do that with the overall length, and then you will just use the same set of directions for the overall width and depth. What you do is you select a tolerance method, and the one that Autodesk calls bilateral, they call it symmetric. So you would select symmetric. And then it will activate this field. This is a bilateral tolerance, so it's going to give you the what number you want to put after the plus minus. In this case, the directions call for a 0.1 bilateral tolerance. You would switch that to 0.1. If we needed more decimal place to, places to display, 
We can switch the precision as well, but for this dimension, a precision of two decimal places is already accurate. So you leave these alone. Hit OK, and then it adds in to your drawing that bilateral tolerance. You would then, of course, do the same thing to the 2.0 and the 3.0, but that's not what I'm going to show you in the video. I just want to show you how you can add that. You also can add unilateral tolerances, and you can also add limit dimension tolerances as well. So for example, in the counterbore uh, that, has, that has a 0.25 inch diameter, okay, that would be this one right here, this hole right here, direction D asks you to add in a unilateral tolerance to the diameter of the hole. So I'll show you how to do that at this point. If I right click the hole note and select edit hole note, the directions for changing tolerances on hole notes is a little different than ones changing linear ones. So what you have to do in that is select first precision and tolerance, and then you have to expand your options. You only have to do this for the first time. You expand your options. It'll give you all these things right over here. Okay. So what you have to then check, there's two, one, actually one thing you have to uncheck first, which is global precision. You uncheck that. And then you're going to go to which feature do you want to add a tolerance to. So in this case, you want to add a tolerance to the diameter. So you would select this box right here. This is referring to the diameter of the hole. You would select this box. You would then change. They want you to do a unilateral, so you would change it to a deviation. Autodesk calls a unilateral, unilateral tolerance a deviation tolerance. And then what you do is you just type in which one, it, which one it is. In this case, they want it to be a upper tolerance of 0.003. But before you do that, you also need to then change the precision. And the reason you change the precision is because you want three decimal places to show up. The precision here is indicating that two would show up. So you have to pull down this and switch it to three and switch this one to three as well. That will give you the proper amount of decimal places to allow you to type in this bilateral tolerance of 0.003. Then you hit OK, and then you hit OK, and it adds in that bilateral tolerance directly to the drawing. Okay? Uh, just 0.03. This is the d direction D, direction D on the sheet, okay? So this video shows you how to accomplish A and D. Then there's three other changes you would make using kind of the same thing, and it does give you the Autodesk vocabulary, and we'll talk more about that in the future.